in this video, we will be talking about, uh, no, not talking about, we'll be discussing a worksheet on um, naming organic compounds. This worksheet is made by Vancouver Community College and yeah, um, this is basically everything that we study right now in grade 11, fourth quarter, organic chemistry. So there are a lot of rules that we have to take note of in order to answer each question. Um, every question has a unique scenario and yeah, I'll be explaining um, each of them as much as possible. And yeah, I'll do my best in the making. So let's proceed. Uh, I've already done questions one to four. Um, I'll just give you a rundown of it. Um, uh, th this, by the way, uh, this is the answer key. Um, I just got it from below. Um, credits to the maker of this uh, worksheet. I don't claim anything, any ownership to it, but we'll be using it for the lecture. So, for number one, um, it's also essential for each question to name what kind of functional groups uh, are present in a, a certain uh, organic compound. Um, it's stated in the instructions that we have to identify the class or uh, what functional group this belongs to. Um, there may be one, more than one functional group, so yeah. Um, alkanes, alkanes, alkynes, they're basically hydrocarbons. Aromatic compounds, the ones with uh, a hexagon, and then uh, there's, an, a, there's a double bond distributed this way. And carboxylic acids, something that's supposed to look like this. Uh, alcohols, uh, alcohol is something like this. Um, so we're also pro we're also commissioned to provide the UPAC. So some total we have to look for the UPAC name and the functional groups. So that's it for the instructions. Um, for number one, um, we know that there is a benzene ring or an aromatic ring, an aromatic compound. This is uh, basically part of the functional group called phenyl group, but we don't really have to write that. So that's phenyl. And yeah, this is benzene and we have an acid halide, although it's not said in the answer key, we, we have um, iodine as a substituent of the cyclohexene or the benzene ring. So we put one iodo and then benzene is still benzene. 1-iodobenzene, that is the name, the UPAC name of this compound for number one. Number two, uh, we have alkane since uh, everything here, although there isn't any line written in between these two parts, um, it's already understandable that, uh, it's already understood that this is single bond, so we describe it as alkane. Alkane type of hydrocarbon. And how many carbons do we have in the parent chain? So we count, um, not not like this. It's only five carbons. We don't count it that way. We count it this way: two, three, four, five, six. And this is a substituent at carbon number three. So yeah, because uh, there is a substituent in carbon three, and it's a methyl. In other words, it's a CH three. Then we put three methyl. That's gonna be part of our. Um, uh, of the final answer later and we know that it's uh, six carbons and it's all single bonds so we put hexane hex for the six bonds and a and e because it's a single bond should it be a double bond it's supposed to be in if it's triple bond then it's ion then yeah therefore if you combine these two uh, root words then we put uh, we make up with three methyl sorry three methyl hexane so that's for number two. For number three, we have uh, something that we call ketone that is basically a part of the carbonyl group uh, that is described as something like this. This is the template for ketone. Basically, um, in number three, the case is that we have CH2 here and then CH3 at the right side. And then um, I'm just showing what I mean, I'm just illustrating this part. And then we have CH3 over here. So, four carbons, we have uh, one, two, three, four carbons. So that makes uh, the root word but, 
meth is 1 carbon, eth is 2 carbon. 3 carbons is prop, 4 carbons is but. And then, because it's a single bond, it's butane. Or, yeah, it's butane. But then, because it's ketone, there's ketone present in the second carbon of the parent chain. Uh, we put, we level 2, and then um, the suffix for ketone is anone. So, always remember this. Ketone is associated with anone. Therefore, we put 2-butanone. It's not 2-butane. Uh, because we because of ketone we put unknown instead of ane, but it's already understood that this is a single bond nevertheless uh, I'm just not sure though if uh, Let's say there's a, a double bond or a triple bond somewhere Include those two or at least one of them. I'm not sure in that regard. So uh, number four Let's count the uh, parent chain. We have one two three four Five, six, seven, eight. We have eight carbons, so that's gonna be oct. And because it's a single bond, we have ane, so octane. And then um, we have, sorry, we have uh, chlorine. This is basically uh, an alkyl. The substituent describes uh, the presence of an alkyl halide. That's what we call it, alkyl halide. Basically, uh, in other words, it's also called uh, acid halide. Uh, we have something like this. Oh no. Um, wait. It's not acid halide. I think acid halide is different. Let me double check. Acid. Ah, okay. Acid halide is different from alkyl halide. This is wrong. It's supposed to be alkyl. Alkyl halides, um, they're basically organic compounds or functional groups described with, uh, let's say, we have a methyl, uh, uh, methane, and then any, um, any halogen in the periodic table, whether it's bromine or chlorine or iodine. Um, the root words would be, uh, for example, for iodine, we have iodo. Iodo. So for this particular um, structure, uh, methane and iodine, it's iodomethane, I think. Let's double check. There you go. So iodomethane, as you can see here, uh, it's iodine and CH3. CH3 describes this one. And this is the iodine. So let's say uh, this is um, instead Br. That's gonna be bromo methane. Let's search. By the way, um, for alkyl halides, we have uh, three types according to the type of hydrocarbon. We can, we have uh, halo alkenes. The ones with single bond, we have uh, for another is halo alkenes, the one with the ones with double bond, and as you might already guess, for the third one, it's gonna be halo alkynes, the ones with triple bond. So one important information you might want to take note of. Um, so bromomethane, what do we have? So it's still the same. Um, CH three and Br they're together. How about, uh, let's try chlorine, Cl. So that's gonna be called chloromethane. Example, uh, another example is, let's try two carbons. So two carbons translates to ethane instead of methane. So chlorine in the first carbon. We start, we, we start counting the carbons from the left side. Uh, basically to wherever a substituent is nearby so uh, speaking of substituent we have the chlorine uh, substituent so you could also write this as one chloroethane or yeah just chloroethane there is no difference anyways so that's it that you have to know for alkyl halides let's go back to number four uh, 
So other than uh, the alkyl halide substituent, we have other substituents. Uh, the two, um, we, have a we have a metal here and here on carbon 2 and 4. So 2, 4, um, I forgot to put. Suppose this is supposed to be dimethyl, not just methyl. If there are three numbers that say 1, 2, and 4, then that's supposed to be tri, not di. And what comes after tri, tetra, and what comes after tetra is penta, then so on and so forth. So 2, 4, dimethyl, and then uh, on the fourth carbon also, we have ethyl, CH2, CH3. So basically two carbons. So let's uh, bring them all together. We have um, the first priority is the alkyl halide. So three chloro, then and then by alphabetical order, E is um, earlier than uh, M. So we put ethyl first uh, conventionally. So for ethyl two for dimethyl octane. So that is the answer as you can see here. We have an alkane and an alkyl halide, so yeah, those are the present things. Let's go with number five. Uh, we might need more space. Number five consists of uh, how many sizes? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have a benzene, and then we have substituents. Uh, two ether substituents. Maybe, I don't think it really matters where we start counting 1 or 2 or 1 or 2 this way uh, since they're both ethers and yeah, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But I think we could also call this cyclohexane but it's uh, this uh, kind of uh, cycloalkene, cycloalkene is more known as benzene or aromatic ring, aromatic compound. So we'll stick to benzene. And then we have uh, one, two, diethyl. We um, bring them together. We have um, the one underlined with uh, the green fluorescent. It's, uh, they're basically considered the functional groups for each question. Number five, we have uh, 1, 2, diethyl, benzene. Let's see if I got it right. What number is that? Number 5. Aromatic compound we have. Hmm. Weird. Benzene is also called uh, aromatic compound. Orso diethyl. Hmm, I wonder why it's orso instead of one two. Oh yeah, it's also called one two diethyl benzene. In other words, so yeah, I'm not sure why orso is another word. Maybe something more complex, something that I don't know, something that wasn't taught to us before. But yeah, uh, we got the um, other conventionally correct answer anyways. Let's move on with number 6. Uh, so we start counting at... I don't know, which do you prioritize first? So situant or the double bond? What if we're given a scenario wherein we have this kind of thing? Which do you prioritize? Triple or double bond? Let's search. Hmm. Double bond goes first. So we start counting here instead of here. For num in the case of number six, uh, which comes first, substituent or double bond? Okay, so double bond first. 
I think. So how many carbons do we have in the parent chain? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> we don't consider this as a substituent uh, for some reason. <laughs> let's just accept that fact. Um, let's make the parent chain as long as possible without compromising the fact that some can be substituents. And this could not be a substituent. So we consider that as part of the parent chain. So we have uh, five carbons. This is uh, alkene. We have an alkene because of the double bond. Uh, alkene with five carbons. Al there is a double bond on the first carbon. So here. Therefore, um, our name would be pentene. And then, where is it located? First carbon, so one pentene or pent one in. Or let's just, go stay, let's just stick with one pentene or just pentene. Since just one, we don't have to write it anymore. But I've showed you um, the conventional way of uh, describing it. So, the third carbon, we have a substituent, so that's 3-methyl. We have a methyl on the third carbon, so 3-methyl. 3-methyl pentene. Let's try. 3-methyl pentene. Let's see if we got it right. That's number 6. Okay, we have an alkene, this is the functional group, and we have a 3 methyl pentene, this is correct. Okay, number 7. We need one more page. Okay, for number seven, uh, we have, what do we have? Uh, parent chain one. So question is, where do we start first? What do we prioritize? Ah, uh, wait, let me just list. So what we learned from number six, um, I'm actually pretty lucky to get number six correctly. I might get, I might get it wrong just because of the just because of misaligning the prioritization stuff. Um, prioritize double bond first, then methyl substituent. Actually, just all substituents, not just methyl. Ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, hexyl, uh, whatever that is. We prioritize double bond first. And if we're trying to choose uh, which goes first double bond or triple bond double bond first then triple bond i think that's my conclusion correct me if i'm wrong but yeah that's what i researched a while ago okay those uh, yellow fluorescent highlights are very important to know uh, for number seven, which do we prioritize? The substituent methyl or this one? This functional group is called uh, coming from, oh, this one, actually. Not just the O. So this is basically ester. Ester has two oxygen. Just remember the mnemonic. I know it's kind of inappropriate, but this is how we remember it. Ester, two balls. You're, you remember Esther with the visual um, illustration as something like this. Or in other renderings, you have something like this. And these are the two balls. As funny as it might be, uh, that's how we memorized it. Me and my classmates and close friends in our STEM community. Mini community. So for Esther, uh, the... Um, how do I say this? It's not a prefix or a suffix, but 
uh, midfix maybe something in the middle it's called oxy and let's see what we have right now is we'll figure that out later but in the meantime uh, how many carbons do we have to know how many carbons we have in the parent chain one two three four five. Oh wait no this is not part of okay I bet the last part is oxymethane and then we describe the prefix part uh, of this one uh, describing this part because this is gonna be the methane after uh, the midfix oxy so I think we have three carbons technically this is alkane three carbons single bond and then we have a substituent uh, you have two methyl in terms of prioritization I don't think it's applicable in this kind of situation because uh, this is a different world this is a different world they're not in the same world if you know what I mean and so two methyl uh, we have for all pain or at least just prop as the prefix and then we have oxymethane so coming from there uh, we have if we combine these uh, terms together we get uh, substituent first so two methyl and then prop and then oxy and then methane I hope we I hope we get this right. Let's check the answer key. Number seven, Esther. Damn, the answer key didn't specify any um, actual answer. Only the U pack. Uh, uh, no, only the functional group. So yeah, that's Esther, correct? I think they forgot to put alkene also. I mean, there are some hydrocarbons here. Anyways, uh, let's double check. 2 methyl propoxy methane. This is what we're looking for. Mm. Oh, why is it not here? Never mind. Anyways, um, it's up to you now. You can't really find an answer anywhere else supposed to get answers from the worksheet itself but they didn't provide it so yeah we don't know if that's right or wrong but i'm pretty sure we got the methods correctly uh, okay so this time we're, gi we're given a question uh, which do we prioritize first alkyl a substituent that is uh, associated with alkyl halide basically any hydrocarbon that's uh, linked together with at least a single halogen that is bromine in this scenario or we um, prioritize the substituent methyl so i believe that uh, prioritize you have to prioritize uh, alkyl halide substituent first then methyl substituent not just methyl generally everything else methyl propyl uh, methyl ethyl propyl butyl 
pentyl-hexyl, etc. So because of that, we start uh, counting the carbons here from here, and then two. We don't start. We don't continue from. We don't continue here. Uh, we just want to go along with the flow of the double bond. So one, two. If you know what I mean. And then three, four, five, six. So coming from there. Um, by the way, we have to name the functional groups present. We have a benzene or aromatic compound. Aromatic compound. And then we have one bromo. We have an alkyl halide. Or we, I don't think we have to name that anymore. Uh, we have four methyl. Okay, all these keywords, let's uh, bring them together. What do we uh, get? One, or just, yeah, let's try one. One bromo, four, me four methyl benzene. That's for number eight, but we have the number eight. Hmm. What's parabromatyl? This looks so weird. Let's try to search this up in the internet and see what social, what image is associated with it. There, it exists. There you go. The internet knows it. And as you can see, just this illustration is similar to this. And it's called 1 bromo 4 mesobenzene, which is exactly what we just said. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure with this. Let's try to search that also. But is that, that Parabromo toluene? Mm. They're the same. I guess this is a synonym or another term. But yeah, I can assure you that uh, what I wrote is correct. For number nine. So let's identify the parent chain first. We have uh, carbon, 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 three, four, five, six. So I guess we have six carbons. We can't extend the parent chain any longer because the substituents are what they are. So one, where do we start though? Do we prioritize the uh, methyl substituent here? or the triple bond here well the substituent is one carbon here well no uh, we prioritize the triple bond first so triple bond first then that's it substituent okay so we have alkyne because of the triple bond alkyne how many carbons one two three four five six six carbons so an alkyne with six carbons is going to be hexane and then substituents what do we have we have uh, this is the second carbon so two methyl 
there is a methyl substituent on the second carbon. In other words, in the third carbon, we have a three acyl. We have an acyl in the third carbon, so we write three acyl. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. We start uh, combining the words that we just formed. So what comes first, methyl or ethyl? Well, E is first, then um, first before M in the alphabetical um, in the alphabet. So three S, uh, three ethyl, two methyl. Voice on. Okay, just making sure. Uh, three ethyl, two methyl. Hexane. Oh yeah, by the way, um, where is the triple bond located? In what carbon? So 1, 2, 3, 4. We put 4 hexane. The triple bond is located in the 4th carbon. So we put uh, 4 hexane or uh, methyl and then hex for ion. But any, uh, this could already do. Let's check the answer. So we, as you can see, 9 is alkyne, so that's correct. Let's uh, copy-paste this, compare it with... Okay, why is it different, I wonder? Okay. Yeah, I did it. Uh, the problem is I didn't follow this policy. What I did was uh, I prioritized the methyl substituent. Even though I wrote this a while ago, I didn't. I didn't think I. I don't think I applied it. So, my bad. Let's uh, redo it. So the triple bond is located at. This is not the. Uh, this is no longer where we're going to base our numbering. We start from here. So one, two. So that's uh, the triple bond is located at the second uh, carbon, so two hexane. And then how about our mess, uh, our acyl? One, two, three, four. So that's four acyl. And then five methyl. So let's uh, renumber that again. Four acyl, five methyl, two hexane. So they're the same. I'll have to get back to this problem later just to make sure all of these are really important extremely important okay numbers 10 and 11 for number 10 uh, we have here in the end uh, it's basically an illustration of something like that I'm trying to point out is this entire region uh, if there's an H here and it's written like this as a carbon as part of uh, the carbon the general carbonyl group format this is an aldehyde there is what we call a hal an aldehyde functional group basically an R and that this is H2 and then Sho. so yeah it's aldehyde basically and how many carbons do we have in the parent chain one we start here we start counting carbons here of course we don't start here because there's nothing else that's more of a priority than aldehyde a carbonyl group so one two three four five there are five so we have aldehyde in for the first carbon and then we have five carbons in total so one then uh, penta noun. The prefix, uh, no, the suffix for aldehyde is al. That's uh, close to the prefix, uh, sorry, the suffix for alcohol, which is all. So let's say methanol. How do you draw methanol? 
like this. And uh, yeah, alcohol is technically part of the hydroxyl group, not carbonyl, so it doesn't follow the format of something like this. Let's say uh, this is associated with aldehyde. We have al as the suffix, so this one is technically uh, ethane, I think, because there are two carbons, so that's S, not meth. So, ethanol. Let's see if, we, if it's uh, correct. There it is. Yeah, they're basically the same as this one, what you see here. They're the same. Well, it's only that uh, this one is condensed, this one is spread out, and everything else follows. Okay, back to the question, uh, back to the solution. Um, there are no other substituents other than, oh yeah, there are no substituents at all. This one isn't a substituent. It's uh, technically ingrained together with the parent chain. The carbons in, within that, uh, carb within the carbonyl structure are still valid as part of the parent chain. So I think this is already the answer, one pentanol in that case. Let's see. Uh, number 10. The answer key didn't mention anything once, once more. But yeah, they mentioned that the functional group is aldehyde. Let's see. One pentanol. Wi Fi is so slow. Okay, let's uh, use this one. So, this thing is basically a condensed. Uh, uh, it has it shares properties with the condensed formula version of the or of the chemical compound. Uh, this version is the uh, skeletal or the line notation. So uh, yeah, um, technically this is the one. Then CH two here, this one, another CH two, this one, another CH two here, which is this one, and then the carbon there, which is this one, this one, this one, the entire thing here. So yeah, they're the same. One pentanol. This is correct. Let's try number 11. We have we start counting the carbons here for the parent chain because uh, there is no other substituent, no other um, priorities except for uh, this one. Uh, so my question is, what is this? Um, you can also write this as like this. This is a general structure for carboxylic acid, which is part of the carbonyl group. So, carboxylic acid, it's technically a functional group, but, but then it does belong to a more generalized uh, group called the carbonyl group. So, carboxylic acid, this is the uh, top priority according to LibreText uh, websites, sources. Um, carboxylic acid is top priority. No discussion. So we have uh, carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, 6 carbons. This is an alkane. Um, the carboxylic acid is located in the first carbon. So, one. Well, how about the uh, suffix of the carboxylic acid? It is classified as noic acid. So, for example, uh, mesa. Noic acid. So we have something like this. This is mesanoic acid. Let's double check. There you go. Now we're talking. So this is uh, formic acid or sorry, 
doesn't work. Uh, formic acid or methanolic acid, they're the same. Uh, this is called. This is basically considered the most, uh, the simplest form of carboxylic acid. Why oh, is it not pasting? Weird. Anyways, uh, I think you can see that they're the same. So, yeah, that's one example of mesonoic acid. Um, just remember the suffix noic acid. Okay, so alkane, we have hexane. We remove the in in respect to noic acid, so hexanoic acid. Where is it located? In the carbon 1, the first carbon, so 1 hexanoic acid. I think that's it. We don't have anything else to put. Because there are no, again, there are no other substituents except uh, this one. Which is not a substituent, but it's still part of, uh, yeah, how, do we, how we describe it. So, one hexanoic acid. Number 11, what's the answer? Okay, so functional group is carboxylic acid. We, I don't think we have to, really, to write that anymore. Uh, it's not exactly wrong, but yeah, it's not part according to the answer key. Uh, hexanoic acid or one hexanoic acid, they're the same. Uh, one or without one, uh, it just gives the same definition. But yeah, if you want to play it safe, if your teacher allows you to play safe in the exam, you just feel free to put one always. But yeah. Some teachers wouldn't want you to write that anymore, so we just put hexanoic acid. Any will do. Okay, let's move to number 12 and 13. And then 14 afterwards. Unnecessary page, delete. For number 12, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbons. Single bond. So we have an alkane. That's one functional group seen here. Well, I think that's the only functional group because everything else, uh, you can see there's some. No, 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 no. These are the old substituents. This one is alcohol. We have alcohol. By um, OH, we already know that it's alcohol. So that's... Um, alcohols, again, they belong to what we call the hydroxyl group. And their suffix is OL. So again, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, etc. Um, we have pentane. And then alcohol is located at the third carbon, so we have three, and then etc. etc. and all. And then substituents, what do we have? Uh, in the second carbon, we have, uh, in the second and fourth carbon, we have two methyls. So we have two and then four methyl. Do we write just methyl? We don't. Because they are two methyls, we put dimethyl. So this is gonna be part of what we're gonna write. Also this, also this. Let's combine them together this time. So we have uh, substituents first, two, four, dimethyl. And then three, and then penta. No, we disregard A. We put all instead. If alcohol is not here, then we put A because it's a single bond. That's it for number 12. Let's see if we got it right. Uh, where's number 12 answer key? Okay, we have alcohol. Okay, that's correct. I'm not sure why they didn't put alkene too, but yeah, anyways. Um, this is the main focus though. Uh, we have 2,4-dimethyl-3-pentanol. Exactly the same as the answer key. Nice. Okay, 13. 
uh, the parent chain you see one two three four five you have five carbons uh, double bond on the second carbon so that's gonna indicate that we have two pentene or pent two in but two pentene is more uh it's less weird less awkward less sus anyways um substituents you only have substituents nothing else no other unique functional groups um the second and second and fourth carbon we have methyl ch3 or h3c uh, this one is uh, the same as ch3 it's just written in, in another fancy way so we have two four dimethyl um, also in the fourth carbon we have ethyl ch2 ch3 so com combine these we get what uh, we, we start writing them so alphabetical order ethyl is first then the methyl so 4 acyl 2 4 dimethyl and then 2 pentene here you go let's double check what is number to state uh ah, number 13 state oh yeah i forgot to write the um what do you call this the functional group we have a double bond so this is going to indicate that we have an alkene okay alkene and then That's weird. Okay, I admit I got it wrong in number 13. We're gonna need a lot more space. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh. The only issue um it says here we have six carbons in the parent chain how are you able to distinguish uh this from a substituent because this is already uh we know we all know that this is ethyl but then if it's if there is no uh that's weird this is so weird this answer uh this answer assumes that uh, we start from here so one two so two hexene we, we, we put two because uh, the double bond starts at the second carbon it's situated at the second carbon and trimethyl uh, this is methyl in second carbon methyl methyl in the fourth carbon so sum total two four four trimethyl. And then you combine these two together, you get the final answer. So yeah, I think this is a topic uh, a kind of problem worth uh, worth debating. Uh, let me screenshot this. I'll send this to my teacher. Let's have him answer this uh, in the meantime. And let him know his thoughts but i won't promise you uh whatever the right actual right answer is here um i think i have good reason also to write it this way assuming that this is acid but if not then i admit my mistake uh we of course which is what i said a while ago um we turn possible substituents uh into we surrender the carbons to the parent chain so this could just be five carbons, but 
it's supposed to be six one two three four five six make the parent chain carbon count uh, law uh, higher as much as possible so that's the general rule of thumb so yeah, let's move to 14 14 we uh, start I have to yeah I think that's where I lack in terms of my understanding of the lesson uh, identifying the parent chain it can be tricky the visuals could be very tricky so yeah one two three oh, okay this isn't a ketone a ketone is defined as uh, this an ether is defined as this notice the difference So that's one thing that you want might want to take note of. Um, so we have the functional group ether here. Um, ether that's translated as uh, oxy, methoxyethane, ethoxymethane. I'm not sure if what I just said, the two things that I just said, uh, uh, correct as per the UPAC uh, policy. But yeah. Let's check for, let's see more. We have alkane. Everything is single bond. Um, substituents. One, two, no. Okay. Oxyethane. Ethane is the, uh, we put ethane here because there are two carbons after the O. Let's just say this is oxy and then this is ethane. And then what we have here, uh, that's what we're going to find out. For alkane, by the way, uh, we have, it's alkane and how many carbons we have in the parent chain? One, two, three, three, only three. So that's going to translate to prop, propoxyethane. Okay, that's going to be in handy later. Uh, let's identify the substituents, this and this. We have uh, two methyl. We have a methyl substituent on the second carbon. We have uh, an acyl substituent on the third carbon. So, oxyethane, prop, two methyls, three acyl. We have... Uh, Okay, prioritize the acyl first by alphabetical order policy. Um, 3 acyl, 2 methyl, and then prop boxy ethane. Let's see if they got it right. Ah, oh, dang. The worksheet didn't provide anything except the functional group that's present. So, we notice that we have an ether. Yes. Uh, let's, let's just um, find it. Let's just verify, verify using the internet if it's correct. 3 acyl, 2 methyl. Okay. 3 acyl, 2 methyl. Methoxy. Me Sorry, propoxy ethane. Okay, ethyl two mena. Ah, oh, weird. Why is there no? Wait a minute. I think I remember one uh, rule of thumb just a few hours ago. I just learned this a few hours ago. Uh, we prioritize... I think we have to prioritize um, the ether... Um, th this part first before the rest. Wait, let me verify. I have my notes a while ago. Uh, I 
really hate this. This is so stressful. Well, given a while ago, um, let me give you another problem that's related so close to the concept of number 14. Um, it's given, it's written this way, CH3, CH, CH. So we're given that and the name of this uh, chemical compound is 3 methoxy 4 5 dimethyl hexane So as you can see the ether was prioritized first before the substituents And then, yeah, I think the, the oxy has to go first before the substituents 3 ethyl and 2 methyl. We'll fix that in a bit. Uh, what else? Well, we started counting the carbons from the right side, not from the left side, even though there's a substituent that's closer from one end the substituent is at the second carbon at the left side but if you count through at the right side this um, ether is located at the third carbon the third carbon is farther from the starting point or from the edge so there has to be a reason why it's called 3 methoxy so it means uh, ether is located at the third carbon we didn't name it as a uh, 2, 3, 2, 3 dimensional. So, 4, 5. Four. Wait, I mean, let's look at the wrong thing. Okay, so. Being guided by this uh, particular example, um, yeah, this is so important right, to learn this. Um, but I'll guarantee you, we're, ge we're getting somewhere. Um, so we start counting here. So first, second. Ooh, okay. Well, there is no carbon here. So, here there's a carbon. So it's a different story for this problem. I, I read what I just said a while ago. Um, this isn't, this scenario isn't the same or similar in any degree we want to number 14. Hmm. So if that's the case, the parent chain can only be here. Yeah, this could only be the parent chain, not this one. This chain has the more car has more carbons than this one, so. 3-ethyl, 2-methyl, and then prop because of the 3 carbons, and then oxy -ethane. I think this is right. I'm pretty sure. Uh, just kind of correct me if uh, you find something that says otherwise. But yeah, that's everything for part A. Damn, how many... How long have we been going? Almost an hour. Okay. Uh, let's continue with letter B. Draw the structural formulas for the following compounds, basically. So, uh, okay. Let's start with number one, one pentene. One pentene, we have a uh, pent. So, pent is five carbons. And because of the ene, 
it's gonna be a double bond there has to be a double bond in the carbon number one so one two three four five you know what this I don't know, I think I have to make it that beautiful I'm um, just one color bob and can do to illustrate one penty no other substituent uh, at the first carbon we have the double bond so here then carbon everywhere it says structural formulas not the line notation or the skeletal form or the condensed formula version just the pure structural formula the kind of structure that takes the most time to make because you have to draw each hydrogen like this so one pentene let's uh, double check i think there's an answer for that below way below this is for letter b more space though okay uh, answer key for number one it's basically this I wonder why the answer key only presents I think this is condensed version not not structural version but then the others they have this they have the structural version that's weird anyways uh, oh yeah you can see this is wrong all um, we all know that uh, carbon has four valence electrons one two three four therefore it can only connect to four hydrogens so if there's a double bond nearby it already uh, it basically connects to yeah this has to be one two three four basically and then here you have to remove it also one two three four yeah that kind of thing so CH2, that's that one. CH, CH, CH2, 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 CH3, CH3. All they're, all they're, all, they're all the same. So this is correct. How about for number two? Two methyl. So there's a substituent, methyl substituent at the second carbon. How many carbons do we have in total? Hept. So that's seven carbons, and then iron. Uh, there's a triple bond on carbon three. In number one, double bond on carbon one. Okay, so two methyl. Let's just write the number of carbons first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then triple bond on carbon 3 so this is carbon 3 if you read from left to right um, if you read from right from right to left then it doesn't really matter anyways um, you can write the you have to write the triple bond here if this is gonna be your third carbon but I prefer reading from from left to right if there's no any other specified instruction or special instruction so this triple bond on carbon 3 over here uh, Two methyl second carbon we have methyl that is ch3 um, i'll just write it as ch3 as a shortcut uh, yeah just uh yeah I'll just write it that way make it fast to make to not make this video too long but you know that ch3 can also be expanded as like this so please do note that by the way, uh, because there's triple bond here, so it already occupies three and then fourth here, so we don't put any hydrogen 
connect to it anymore next here okay okay that's it that's it for number two two mesyl there's a mesyl in uh, carbon two uh, three there's a triple bond in carbon three and then hep time uh, hep seven carbons one two three four five six seven this is correct Check number two. What do we have for number two? Okay, CH3 here, CH here, CH3 here, CH, CH, triple bond, triple bond, C, C, then CH2 here, CH2, and then CH3. All correct, all present, reporting for duty. Everything in the counter for. How about number three? Uh, we have an SO substituent on the third uh, third carbon. Uh, we have two methyl substituents on the fourth and fifth carbon, and then we, we put pentane. So this is uh, five Cs. This is single bond because of the A and E suffix. Therefore. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'll say this is the third carbon, so SL here. CH2, CH3. And then four, five, we have an SL. Then everything else is single bond. Whether, it's, uh, whether the substituent is at the top or below doesn't really matter. Um, CH here, and then. Oh, wait a second. This, uh, the answer key started from here, so that's the one, and then CH2, CH, and then SO there and then ch here ch3 here and then ch2 that is this one and then ch3 here so the same okay that's for number three number four and move this a bit so we have two so there's an so substituent on the second carbon and then uh, we have five carbons because it's pentane and then all we have alcohol at carbon one so let's bring them to action uh, we have five carbons okay and then we have ethyl on the second second carbon and then anol that's alcohol on the first carbon you can put them anywhere. I'll, I'll put them at, at the top. So OH. And then to ISO, that's done. Everything else we put H. So far, so good.
Okay, let's see if uh, number four answer key has the same as mine. If I'm the same with the answer key. H O O H and then C H two C H two C H C H the S L that one C H two C H two and then C H three all correct. Number five. Okay, this is out of my league. I don't know what this means. But let's give it a try. What does emblem of it mean? Oh, by the way, uh, fennel is uh, basically uh, the functional group for everything that's cyclo. Whether it's cycloalkane, cycloalkane, cycloalkyne. Uh, yeah, it belongs to the phenyl group, so I think it's something associated with phenyl, phenyl, and bromyl phenyl. Oh yeah, um, there is all ol as a suffix because it has alcohol. Okay, um, we'll just skip that. I don't know that. I don't know that. Ooh, first this is my first time to to encounter a tetra, so this is gonna be special for number six, uh, number five. Skip. Octane. We have eight carbons, so write them immediately. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four. There is a triple bond at the fourth carbon, so we have. Uh, triple bond here. Tetra -ethyl. Okay. So we have uh, two ethyls on the third carbon. Sideways. And then six, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the sixth carbon. We put another um, two acids. And then yeah, that's it. And then everything else you write carbon. I'm ah, sorry, we write hydrogen. basically for number six number seven methyl hexanoic acid there is obviously the suffix noic acid so we know that this is there is um, the involvement of carboxylic acid uh, an organic compound that belongs to the functional group of carbonyl but some sources state or what my teacher says is that is that um, carboxylic acid is a functional group itself which is something that they think weirdly of so carboxylic acid. How many do we have left? Okay. We're almost done with letter B. I might end it here. I thought it isn't supposed to be under 30%. So that I could uh, anyways. Um for methyl hexanoic acid. Hexa. So there is six carbons. And then there's a metal substituent on the fourth carbon. So let's uh, draw a hexagon. Two, three, four, five, six. There isn't any statement on uh, whether this is uh, gonna be double bond or triple bond. So by default, it's supposed to be uh, single bond, probably because there's carboxylic acid or any other functional group that's present. So four methyl. Uh, how do we start counting? Let's start counting by default. Uh, the one is always going to be the, at the top. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then methyl is going to be here. Substituent. Uh, 
hexanoic acid. There is no one. I mean, there is no there is no number specified as to where um, the carboxylic acid is located. So maybe by default it's one. So at the first carbon, we put. Uh, We put. Wait, wait. Um, oh, this is gonna be challenging. Because by default, um, carboxylic acid again is like this. So, how do we integrate this here? I give up. What's the answer key? Yeah, that's weird. Oh yeah, well, this is already right. But then it's it's written this way. Um, maybe mine is more associated with line notation. But I don't think our teacher really cares if or we write the structural or line notation. Um, so far, he only asks us to write li the line notation version of uh, organic compounds, not the structural. So, yeah, I've never encountered writing this kind of uh, structure for uh, any cycloalkane or anything that's cyclic. Wait, no, there's nothing mentioned about cyclic stuff. I am so sorry. I thought carboxylic was associated with cyclic. Anyways, let's redo it. Let's just think, let's just imagine that the uh, answer key isn't, hasn't been seen yet. Oh, it's so high. first carbon we have that kind of thing and then for fourth carbon we have methyl the substituent methyl everywhere else we have hydrogens just basically interchange this and this the position of those two uh, but they're, they're uh, theoretically the same ch2 correct ch2 ch and then ch3 here ch2 and ch ch3 okay good that's for number seven let's go with number eight For number eight, we have uh, six carbons, hex, and then there's a double bond on the second carbon. Uh, we have four ethyl, two, three dichloro. There's an alkyl halide in our, um, we expect an alkyl halide, two of them, on the second and third carbon respectively. Two, three, four, five, six. We have six carbons, second and third, we have chlorine, chlorine. How about the fourth carbon? We have ethyl, CH2. Let's just write it below CH2, CH3, 
and then 2 hexene on the second carbon we have double bond. You put it here. Okay. We fulfill this part for SL also, which is this one. And then 2 hexene. Okay, we're done. Uh, let's just write the remaining hydrogens. What's the answer? Let's answer. So C CH three, and then fluorine, and then another fluorine. Don't forget the double bond in between them. Uh, CH. And then what? I wonder why my SO is on the fifth carbon. It's supposed to be here at the fourth. My bad. But now, at least you know how it works, how it's supposed to work. First, second, third, fourth. This is a fourth carbon. Therefore, that's where SO is supposed to be. Note that. And then CH2, good. CH3, good. Okay, that's it for number eight. Number nine. We'll, we'll wrap up here from actually yeah let's wrap up here um i'll be making a part two video um answering these and uh everything for that we see that is uh drawing open chain structures yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching